Shalom saints, shalom and uh, good day. How are you all doing? I'm your host, Sister Dalila Dush Santush, here with you today. May the good Lord bless you and keep you as you tune in. I hope you are all ready for another day of divine impartation from the Holy Spirit. Welcome, Marcel. There's only two of us now. <laughs> Welcome, welcome all. Shalom, you the ones joining to the live stream. Taz, shalom. Shalom, Sister Brenda. Shalom, Sister Shelley. Thank you for the gift, Sister Brenda. Sister Choma, how are you today? Shalom, shalom, Sister Pamela. Shalom. Shalom, Kumbi G. Shalom. Shalom, Wellness. Shalom, Shion. Shalom, Lucia. Shalom. Shalom, Brother Robinson. Shalom, Sister Brenda. Shalom, Sister Blessings. Thank you for the gift, Sister Brenda. God bless you. Shalom, Sister Beth. Hi. Shalom. Shalom, Sister Tasha. How are you? Shalom, Brother Jaha. I'm so happy to see you. Shalom, Sister Cassandra. Sister Juanita. Shalom. Shalom as you all join in, servants of the Most High Gods. Hi, Sister Pat Nails. How are you doing? Thank you for the gifts. Sister Lorian. Shalom. Sister Alice, thank you for the gifts. Shalom. Shalom, Ali. Shalom, Renee. Shalom, Blue Oceans. Shalom. Shalom, Saint. Shalom, Diana. Shalom, Sister Shamila. Shalom. Hello. Shalom, Sister Kita. Shalom as you join in. Shalom, Lebo Gang. Shalom. Shalom, Sister Emily. Shalom, Porsche Sleek. Shalom, Sister Angie. Shalom as you all join in, Saints. May the good Lord bless you today. Oh yes, the Lord is going to speak mightily to us today. Oh yes, impartation from the Holy Spirit will take place today. Oh yes. Shalom David, Shalom Sister Selena Martinez, Shalom Sister Lori, how are you today? Greetings, greetings, Shalom Peace Psalms 91, Shalom, Shalom as you all join in, Bian Habile, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom Shalom, Sister Anna Cruz. Shalom and blessings. Shalom as you all join in. Shalom, G Max. Shalom, 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 Sim Sim. Shalom, Shalom, Nadi. Shalom, Shalom and good day. Shalom, Saints. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. I'm waiting for everybody to log in. In the meanwhile, saints, get your Bibles ready, get your water, get your tea to remind all of you today, saints, that we are still fasting, all right? Shalom, Sister Winnie from Kenya. God bless you. Queen Hadassah, shalom. Shalom, 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 G Max, shalom. Shalom, A Preston, shalom, Sister, shalom, Jalimar Diamond in business, shalom. Shalom as you join in. Shalom, 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 shalom. What's Sister Andrea? Shalom, Brother Morgan, Brother Garrett Morgan. Shalom, how are you today? Sister Savannah, shalom. Jermaine, shalom. Gracie, shalom. Priscilla, shalom, shalom. Hi in Uganda, hi. <laughs> shalom, shalom, saints. Shalom as you join in. Get your Bibles ready, saints. We are going to hear from the Lord today. Get your Bibles ready, your water, your tea, or your coffee. To remind again, saints, that we are fasting. All right, saints, that um, those of you who are observing this period of corporate fasting, that the Lord will continue to give you the strength that you will follow till the end, that you will not going to give up. All right? So, saints, I'm just waiting for at least a hundred of us to be here, and then I'll begin. Sister Tembi, shalom. Thank you, Sister Lorian, for reminding us that it's day nine. God bless you. Chanel, good luck. Shalom. Shalom, Sister Sadie. Shalom. And God bless you. Shalom, Sister Alice Jones. Shalom, Sister Joy. Shalom, Sister Tembi. Shalom, shalom, saints, as you join in. Just a little bit more and we will be here. Sister Tembi, thank you for the gift. I'm elated. Thank you very much. Hello, love bird 18. How are you today? Rahel Moges, shalom, 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 shalom. Bon dia, bon dia, saints. Shalom, shalom, Sister Tracy. How are you doing today? I'm glad to see you. Shalom, Sister Kita. 
Hadia, shalom. Shalom, saints. I think we can start. We are all here. So, saints, as I was saying, get your Bibles read. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And may you live long and prosper in Jesus' name. So, saints, let us get everything ready. Your Bibles, get everything ready. It's going to be a day of the impartation from the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. Even some of you that have never had an experience of being baptized by the, by the Holy Spirit, you will today after this ministration. So be, be excited for what God is going to do today. Oh, hallelujah. So saints, as usual, I will begin by consecrating this live stream unto the Lord. Welcome, Sister Jolene. And thank you for the gift. Father Lord, we thank you once again for another day, Lord God. And for another day that you have given us divine opportunity, Lord God, to enjoy this great gift that is the gift of life. But not only that, Lord God, the gift of salvation that has been made possible by you dying for us on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. Had not been for your sacrifice, Jesus, we wouldn't be here. Had not been from, from, for your mercies, Lord, we would have been consumed by your wrath. But we are grateful for the shed blood of your son, Yeshua, on a cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. And we worship you and we honor you, Lord. We glorify your holy and precious name. We give you honor and adoration, Lord God. You are everything for us. Father, Lord, without you, we cannot do anything. Without you, we cannot find identity. We cannot operate, Father, Lord, in victory. So, Lord, we are thankful for the gift of salvation, for revealing yourself to us, Lord God, for being merciful, Father, Lord, and constantly forgiving, Lord God, and, and word, worthy of all honor and glory and adoration are you, Lord God. Father, Lord, we come before you today in the mighty name of Jesus to ask you that you will continue to forgive us from all our transgressions and iniquities up to 50 generations before us, almighty God, of those who have offended you, Lord God. Father, Lord, I'm asking you today, be merciful unto us. Extend the gift, Father, Lord, of mercy unto us, your children, today. Begin to bind principalities and rulers of darkness, evil spirits, oh, Lord God, that are seeking to steal, kill, destroy, Terminate the live stream, cause problems with the internet, the sound, and even, Father Lord, um, 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 the, the image, Father Lord, the quality of the image. Father Lord, I'm asking you today that you begin to bind all these principalities and all these rulers of darkness and cast them all onto the bottomless feet of the abyss forever and ever. Never to have any power, control, dominion, authority against us, your children, almighty God. Oh, Father Lord, I'm asking you today, take control, take authority, be sovereign, sovereign over this ministration. Over us, your children that are here present. Father, Lord, we are here to hear from you, Lord God, to receive from you a word that is going to change our lives. Father, we need divine revelation. Father, we need to have an encounter with you today, Lord God. So, Father, Lord, we open our hearts, our souls, and our spirits to receive from you today our daily bread, Lord God, to receive from you today, Father, Lord, your will and your purpose, Father, Lord, for our lives. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I am asking you today that you begin to saturate this environment with your Holy Spirit. That you begin, Father, Lord, to envelope each one of us here with your precious blood. Father, Lord, that we will be, Father, Lord, fully covered under your wings, Father, Lord, under your shadow, hidden from the plans of the wicked one. Father, Lord, I'm asking you to take authority against all those who are seeking to sabotage this live stream. Seeking, Father Lord, to cause disruptions, empty, Lord God, and confusion, Father Lord, and what not. Father Lord, I pray that you will arise from heaven and take authority over them. And Father Lord, evict them of this live stream, Lord God. And let your Holy Spirit have freedom and have liberty to come into our midst, Lord God. And change us and transform us and give us the victory today, Lord God. Have dominion, Lord God. Father Lord, speak to us today. We are here, ready to hear from you, Lord God. Father Lord, 
Lord, we are here because we are in the spirit of obedience, ready to receive the Holy Ghost, ready to receive your word, Father Lord, so that we will never be the same again, Lord God. Father Lord, thank you. Father Lord, we worship you and we honor you. I pray that you will summer from the four corners of the world. Every one of your children that you want to receive the ministration today so that you will speak to them, Father Lord, in ways that they have never experienced before, including us. Including I praise and adoration, Lord God, and we thank you for all that you did, all that you are doing and about to do, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Saints, get your Bibles ready, as I said. Let the Holy Spirit begin to minister today, saints. All right? I hope you have your Bibles ready, that everything is available to you. Okay? So, today, the scripture, it's in the book of Exodus 32, from verse 1 to 14. Exodus 32, from verse 1. So 14, that is the scripture for today. And as you can see for the title of this live stream, are you building a golden calf? Oh yes, it is time for you and myself to examine our hearts, our souls and our spirits. If we are not entertaining any sort of idolatry, are we building golden calves? Are we worshiping something that is of the enemy? Do we have in our possession things? Are we doing things that we are allowing us to worship the enemy? Today, God is going to reveal that to us. Today, God is going to search our hearts, our souls, and our spirits so that he will examine us today so to establish whether we are being faithful to him or not. And that is why the title for this live stream is, Are You Building Any Golden Calves? This message is for the believers. Remember those in the desert that were, that built the golden calf. They were not pagan, a pagan nation. No, they were the Israelites. They were chosen by God. They had an encounter with God. They had seen how God delivered them from slavery. Yet, yet, they rebelled against God. Yet they were quickly, you know, to replace God by an idol. So saints, let us read. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing, and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol, cast in the shape of a calf, fashioned it with a tool. Then they said, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Afterward they sat down to eat and drink and got up and indulged in revelry. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down, because your people whom you brought out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I have commanded them and, may, and have made themselves an idol, cast it in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are of stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? 
Turn from your fierce anger. Relent and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land I promised them, and I will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Oh, yes, saints. I was praying and I asked God yesterday, I said, Lord, what is the message that you want me to preach tomorrow for your children? And he said to me, preach about the golden calf. And then again, I said, but Lord, but what exactly should I preach? And God gave me divine revelation. He said, when Moses went up to Mount Sinai to speak to God, to receive impartation from God, the Israelites, they thought that Moses had gone and the little weights for them was unbearable. They could not wait and be, they decided to build a golden calf to worship and they attribute that demonic golden calf, the powers of God. They began to say that it's, it was that idol that they had built that had redeemed them from slavery and brought them out of Egypt. They begin to worship and the Bible says here, that along with the worship came great um, sacrifices that they offer, offered to that calf and a party. And it looks like depravity was, was going on as well as part of the worship of that golden calf. And the Lord said, my people are just the same. Oh, yes. The Lord said, my people are just the same. Jesus has been translated to heaven he is reigning he's your god he sits at the right hand side of god he has gone to prepare a place for us but we his children we have forgotten that he has gone to prepare a place for us so we have erected golden calves and now as the chosen ones we have begun to worship that golden calf how many of you he have heard this saying christians people that were once walking with christ saying well jesus said he's coming back where is he where is he he has not returned we are still waiting for him same thing that the israelites did in that desert they began to say where is moses is gone we need something to replace god because he is not here to guide us anymore he is not here to tell us what and what so we need to erect something that we can worship that we can offer sacrifices because moses has gone same thing with us the children of god god has gone to prepare a place for us he done what he needed to do he sacrificed his life for me and you but how are we living our lives as believers as the chosen people of the most high we have forgotten from where jesus redeemed us we have forgotten the finished works of calvary we have forgotten that jesus has given his life for us he shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sins and now we have forgotten all the wonderful things that jesus has done and because he has not yet returned we think that he will never return how many of you deep down when people begin to talk about rapture and jesus coming back you are so disconnected you don't get excited you have a erected a golden calf you have replaced jesus but some golden calf that's why you are not excited when people tell you of the second coming of jesus you are not excited you don't see it as something that is about to take place you cannot connect with that truth you reject it deep down in your heart search yourself if you are a person that when you begin to see prophetic um, 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 ministrations where men and women of God are telling you of the signs of the end times and that the second coming of the Messiah is imminent, you no longer get excited. You used to when you accepted Jesus. You used to when you were a baby in Christ. But now that you have matured and you know the Bible a little bit more, you are beginning to reject that that, that, that truth that Jesus is coming back. The Lord wants you to examine yourself here on this live stream. What is your golden calf? Some of you, your golden calf is your career. 
Oh yes, you have forgotten that you have a purpose in Christ. You are a child of God and you have obligations as well as you have responsibilities. You have obligations towards God. We have benefits from God, but we have responsibilities. We owe him obedience. You have forgotten that. So your job has replaced God. Your devotion goes to your job, to your career. Your devotion goes to your, your business that you are building. Your devotion goes to your spouse. You, you, that is your golden calf. Your devotion goes to your children. That is your golden calf. Oh, yes. The golden calf represents everything in your life that has replaced God. And your devotion and your, your service to God. That is your golden calf. Some of you, your golden calf is entertainment. You have no time for God. During the week, the excuse is that, oh, I'm working. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. During the weekend, oh, I'm too tired. So I need to relax myself. So let me watch a nice series. Let me watch a nice program. And you have forgotten that Jesus is coming back. Oh, yes. Just like how Moses was there in Mount Sinai. He had not forgotten his assignments, assignment, his service to God. He had not forgotten his labor for the Lord. He was just there obeying God to receive the laws from him. But the people assumed that he had gone, never to return. And God brought me deeper in revelation. He said, my people are so corrupted that they, because of the corruption they have led their own spiritual leaders to build the cow, the calf, to be the golden calf for them. Oh yes, who was in charge of building that golden calf? Was it not Aaron, a Levite? He was appointed to be the one offering sacrifice to the Lord, burning and sacrifice to the Lord. It was his descendants and he by him that were chosen for the service of God you are doing just the same now because of your greed because you want to be comfortable in your idolatry and with your golden calf you have led your spiritual leaders to make you comfort com to make you comfortable in worshiping your golden calf some of them are helping you build it when you go to them to ask them for for counseling or you're doing something and you've gone to your spiritual leader, you tell them a story that is not the real story so that they can pray for you to help you to be comfortable in your sin. To help you to be comfortable in your mess. God is saying today, I am coming back. Will you be able to endure my wrath? Will you be able to endure my judgment? The Lord is calling us to repentance. Some of you, your golden calf, it's because you cannot trust in God. Oh yes, when your life begins to have difficulties and you are facing challenging times, you cannot trust God for your salvation. You cannot trust God to deliver you. So you go and consult people. You go to herbalists, you go to people who do things with herbs, people who can read your palm, people who can read cards so that you know what, how you should conduct yourself in order to come out of that situation. Some of you, you don't physically go to a place, but you, your children, your family are your gods. You don't have not even five minutes to sit down with the Lord and begin to worship him and begin to honor him and begin to give him praise for who he is. You are too busy. You are too busy with your golden calf. And many times the Lord comes and knocks on the door of your heart to tell you that, look, do I still have a place in your heart? And all he finds is golden calf. Some of you, you don't just have one golden calf. You have several ones. Come on now. How many of you, your golden calf is a certain addiction that you have? Because you are so addicted to food, you cannot fast. Because you are so addicted to entertainment, you cannot take some time to worship God. Because you are so hooked on a certain program, on a certain celebrity, you cannot worship God. Some of you are worshiping yourselves. Everything is to make your life comfortable. 
Oh, yes. I'm not saying that there is nothing wrong about being decent, wearing good clothes, being clean, have a nice, you the, the gentleman, have a nice shave or haircut. That is not what I'm saying. But some of you, you are your own golden calf. You worship yourself. Oh, yes. You have no time to look and see that I am just a mortal being. One day I'm going to have to give an account to God. One day I'm going to have to give God an account for how I'm living my life. All you do is sit down to worship yourself. Oh, yes. How can you make your hair this? How you, can you make your this and that? How can you make your nails that? How can you make this? It's all about everything in your life. It's about you and you and you and you. No space for God. No space for God. Some of you, the minute your husband begins to tell you this and this and that, you have forgotten the fasting. You have forgotten the prayer time with God. You have forgotten everything because your husband or your wife are your idol. You worship them. You will do anything for them. But when God is telling you to do something, you reject God. You have no time for him. And you know why we behave like that? Because we have been desensitized. Yes. We can no longer believe that God is coming back, that Jesus is coming back to judge the living and the dead. And how have you been desensitized? Because this message that I'm preaching today, it's not popular anymore. Your pastors, your preachers, your spiritual leaders are only preaching that you are going to be rich. Are only preaching that you are going to be somebody in position of authority. That's all they preach to you. They don't tell you about your golden calf. They see that you have a golden calf. They see that you are worshipping that golden calf. They can see that you are far away from God. But guess what? They don't tell you. Because they helped you erect that golden calf. They were the ones melting the gold for you to build that golden calf. To sacrifice to that golden calf. And now they are telling you that that golden calf is the one that is going to give you this and give you that. Jesus is not in the picture anymore. Oh yes. Some of you that are here watching me today. You think that, oh, God is, is a good God. That's how you believe. God is a good God. So whatever I'm doing, he is already, he's already forgiven me. He, you know, he's already pardoned me. There is no need for me to continue to repent. There's nothing wrong with my life. You have built in yourself a golden calf and that is pride. You cannot look at yourself and examine yourself and see what areas of your life you are not in obedience to God. You are not serving him. You cannot see that. And because your spiritual leader, your pastor and whomsoever is in charge of your spiritual life does not tell you. Because they are in compliance with your sin. They are in agreement with whatever you are doing. Because they helped you to be in idolatry. They make everything comfortable for you to be able to build that golden calf. They told you how to build it. Is it not how? Aaron did to Israelites. He told them, oh, I can do it. Just please give me all your gold and everything and I will build it for you. Same thing with you watching me today. Your pastor, your spiritual leader, your prophet said, bring me all your gold. Bring me everything and I will melt it. And then so you can erect your beautiful golden calf and worship him in peace. And I will not be in your way. Oh, yes. That's why your pastor doesn't pray, doesn't preach against idolatry, does not preach against fornication, cannot preach against adultery, cannot preach against all these sins that are leading men to hell every day. I have bad news for you, saints. Hell is packed with Christians. Hell is packed with people like you and me that once confessed Christ. Yes, they confessed Christ with their mouth. So did the Israelites had one confessed Jehovah as their God and deliverer. But guess what? Even they that were the chosen ones, they erected for them idols. And, and the golden calf was all they wanted to see. They had forgotten that Moses one day was going to come down from Mount Sinai. They forgot. 
in their hearts, in their souls, in their spirits, they believed that Moses was not going to come back. That he did what he needed to do and he went. Some of you, you were the same. Oh, Jesus is not going to come back. Oh, perhaps he will come back when I die. Oh, perhaps he's going to come back when I'm gone. Even my, my children will not be here. You are fooling yourself. He said you will come like a thief in the night. But some of you, you don't believe. And you don't believe why? Because your life, you know that you worship a golden calf. So the idea that a, your God is going to come back, it's not comfortable for you. Because your pastor doesn't preach it anymore. Your pastor only preached that you're going to get rich next year. Your pastor tells you, give me your gold. Give me everything that you have. Let me build you a golden calf and all will be well with you. I'm here to say that all is not well with your soul. All is not well with you if you have golden calves. If you are worshiping this golden calves all is not well with you god has already told you don't mess with that woman she's married but you are still there disobedient god has already told you don't mess with that man he's married but you're still there disobedient god has already told you stop going to that church look for another church that is preaching my word but you are disobedient to god because you don't want anyone that is gonna deal with your golden calf anyone that is willing to deal with your golden calf is your enemy some of you know that this live stream was was banned i was cut off why because I'm dealing with your golden calf. I'm dealing with your golden calf. And some people have hatred for those who are dealing with the golden calf. And telling them that, look, you have a golden calf. It doesn't matter how you try to hide. It doesn't matter how you try to hide from, from everybody. You cannot hide from God. Oh, yes. Perhaps you are saying to me here, but Dalila... Oh, Sister Dalila, I don't have any golden calf. I don't do any of these things. I try to, to do this and to do that. I'm always trying. What about the things that you watch? You then desensitize to P-O-R-N. Oh, yes. You watch things that are disgusting and you, you are so desensitized. You don't even know that that is wrong, that what you are watching. Some of you, the minute that idol that you worship, your celebrity releases uh, either a skincare line or whatever, you are the first one to go there and support them and, and, and help them to erect also the golden calf and you help them worship the golden calf. That is why you don't want to hear the truth. Oh, yes. Some of you here, you don't believe. You are not believers because if you believed, you wouldn't do the things that you are doing. Oh, yes. Some of you are so quick to slander somebody, to say everything about that person, how they dressed, how they this, how they that slander the person completely. And you just say it's gossip. Oh, it's just a chat with my best friend. Listen to me. This is your golden calf. Some of you is slander, is gossiping, or oh, spreading rumors about people. That is your golden calf. That's how you entertain yourself. That's how you keep yourself busy. Busy with other people's lives. Busy with what others are doing and slander them, tearing them to shreds. So that you can have in your heart some sort of sense of importance. That you are somebody. That is your golden calf. Oh, but I'm not after riches. I don't go to church to, 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 you know, to be rich. But guess what? You go there to judge others. You begin to talk about sister so and so, how she this, how she that, and brother so and so, how this she and this, and you judge them. And oh, perhaps they are doing this, perhaps they are, I'm sure they are doing it. Listen, you have built yourself a golden calf, and you are worshiping that golden calf. You are, every day you are offering sacrifice, and the sacrifice is the slander. You begin to text people, you begin to go on WhatsApp, you are sending messages, you are proactive online, checking their status. You need to find out what. What they are doing where they are going you want to control every aspect of their life so that you can tarnish their reputation guess what that is your golden calf and you have to offer a sacrifice and that is your daily sacrifice that you offer to your golden calf some of you here the gentleman oh but i'm not in adultery i'm not doing any of these things that sister Dalila is now telling me it i'm not doing any of it but guess what guess what you are doing 
You are coveting those women that you see on Instagram. You are going on their profiles. You are saving them. You are following them. You are always monitoring them, what they do, what they're not doing. You are coveting everything that has to do with them. You are in adultery. It's just that you have not, some of you, you the reason why you have not committed adultery is because you sincerely, let me just be honest, you don't have the money. If you had money, you would have gone with the with the Instagram models, you have gone to do whatever. It's just because you don't have money that you have not gone. But in your heart already, you are there. In spirit, you are there. Oh yes, in your mind, you are already there. Just because that you are broke, you don't have the money. So don't bother to criticize those that have those that kind of lifestyle. Some of you, you're just covetous of them because they actually have the money. And you don't. But you have, before God, you have committed the sin anyway. So might as well you just repent. Fix yourself. You the ladies as well. From Monday to, to Sunday, you are looking for sugar daddies. You are looking for somebody that is going to pay your rent. You are looking for so and so to help you buy this, pay that bill, pay that, but you are married. You Listen, that is your golden calf. You don't want to rely on God. You don't want to wait upon God's timing. You don't want to obey God. And that is why nothing is happening in your life. And you have to resort to sin, to immorality, to degrading yourself so that you can go forward in life. I'm here to say, saints, that when a man or a woman erects a golden calf, they begin to believe wretchedly. Oh, yes. Can you see that when they built, they erected the golden calf, they began to dance and debauchery took place and immorality took place. I believe that even certain things that I'm not allowed here to say happened around that golden calf, including sacrifice. I'm here to say when a man and a woman has erected a golden calf and they are worshiping that golden calf, they begin to believe, behave like wretched people, immoral people, people who have no standards, people who anything goes, anything, anything goes. But because you have a banner of a Christian, you think that you are okay. You think that God is not going to judge. Remember, before, before Moses even went down, God began to reveal to him, look what your people are doing. And God was going to, going to consume them. But Moses interceded for them, said, Lord, if you consume these people with your wrath, then our enemies in Egypt will mock and say, look, the same God who delivered them is the same God who is now destroying them. But guess what? Jesus until today is interceding for you. The wicked things that you are doing, Jesus is still before the throne of his father interceding for you. I'm asking you until when will Jesus have to intercede for you? Until when will Jesus have to plead for your life? Until when? Time is running out, saints. Moses interceded for the Israelites so that they will not be consumed. So is Jesus right now as we sit interceding for you. Saying, Father, don't, don't call him home today. Because if you do, he's not ready. Father, don't call her today. Because if she comes, she's not ready. How, for how long will Jesus will continue to wrestle with you? For how long will Jesus have, have, will have to continue to plead with the Father because of you? For how long will he have to do this? For how long? Because as far as I understand, jo uh, Moses did this once. But some of you, you are on borrowed time. I'm sorry to say this to you. You are on borrowed time. You should have gone five years ago because God is fed up with you. But Jesus is still having mercy. Jesus is still crying for you before the throne of God and says, give her more time, Lord. Give her more time, Father. Remember, I died for her. If she comes here, I will be put to shame. Give her a little bit more time. But what are you doing with your borrowed time? You are adding more golden calves to your already large and vast collection. Do you know that one depravity calls another one and so it goes and so it goes until God one day will deliver you to your own reprobate mind. 
Some of you, you're crying. I can never go forward in life. Oh, my, I have my finances. Oh, my health. And listen, once you identify the golden calf and you repent before the Lord and you smash that golden calf and you destroy it and you repent before the Lord, everything in your life will fall into place. Oh, yes. Some of you, your golden calf is fornication. You cannot help it. Jesus is not on your list of priorities. It is the fornication that is in your list. It's the adultery. is stealing, is lying and manipulating others. That is your idol. And you cannot help it. But I'm here to say God is fed up. That's why he gave me this scripture. He knew you was going to be here today. He knew you was going to be here today, but guess what? The Lord only chastised those whom he loves. Look at the people who are here. Normally it's 300, going 400, sometimes 500. They don't want to hear the truth. By the minute they know that it is something about correction. It is a warning from God. It is that means that God is not, not, God is upset. They leave and they say, oh, the live stream today was too negative. Oh, the live stream today wasn't good. Because why is dealing with their golden calf? Is dealing with the idols they have erected. And they don't want to hear that. They want to, that kind of sermon that is telling you are wonderful, you are blessed, you are highly favored, you are stepping into higher grounds. Oh, the Lord is enlarging your tent. Look, the blessings are for those who are obedient to Christ. The blessings are for those who are observing God's commandments. The blessings are for those who are enduring much because of God's uh, uh, love, the love that they have for God. The love that they have for God makes them be obedient. No matter what happens, they are obedient. Yes, some of you here applying for jobs, no success, but still faithful to God. Some of you here applying for jobs, no response. Somebody came with an evil proposal that could help you. You could be working now. And you said no, because this is not a blessing. This is not what God has spoken in his word. He said that his, his blessings make it rich and add no sorrow. This is not a blessing. Therefore, I will say no. Even if I have to struggle with my bills. Even if I have to struggle keeping my kids. Even if I have to struggle a little bit more. This is not a blessing of God. This is not what God has promised me. So therefore I reject it. I don't want it. I would rather suffer. Oh yes. Some of you have said that. And because you have said that God is releasing his blessings. You tell me where in the Bible it says that the blessings are for the disobedient. You tell me where in the Bible the blessings are for those who don't comply with God's commandments and are, 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 are people who are against everything that God is telling them to do. You tell me and I will go and read the scripture. Perhaps I am wrong and I have not read the Bible correctly. Any man who was called by God. Remember Moses. He was called to renounce. He was called to leave everything behind and follow him. Oh, yes. Let me give you examples. God revealed himself to Moses in that fiery bush. Oh, yes. That's where he revealed himself. He told him, look, this is the assignment. Leave everything behind. Follow me. I will be with you. You had your time of revelation where God revealed himself to you. He told you what was your assignment, what he required from you, and he told you how to go about it. But because things did not happen your way, because the blessing comes always after trials and tribulations. Remember, the victory comes after great warfare. You began to lose hope in God. So you said, perhaps I will just erect myself a golden calf. I'm better off. I will just offer sacrifice. And you know what is the disrespect, saints? The disrespect is that you are now attributing that golden calf. All the worship, 
and all the honor that belongs to God because you are telling yourself and those around you that is your golden calf that has blessed you, is your golden calf that has delivered you, is your golden calf that did this and did that to you. That's why when your friends that are unbelievers called you and say, wow, you are so intelligent at work. I always admire your presentation. You begin to say yes, because I went to a private university. I've always been private education. Uh, you know, look at you. Look at your life. You forgot who opened the door for you to be in education. You've forgotten who gave you the intelligence. You've forgotten who gave you the gifts. You forgot you who empowered you, who gave you strength. How many people died before finishing education? How many people? But God sustained you in good health throughout education. God allowed you to all enter into those that people that like you from your background did not have access. And you are now saying that God did not do anything for you. Now when a pastor comes, a man or a woman of God comes to tell you that, look, God is telling me this and this and this about you. Oh, you, you know, that is not God. You, you go to your, to, to your home and it says, that is not God. And you begin to say, how much he makes a month? How, mu how much does he make a month to tell me about money and about this and about that? Look, how much money are they making in that church? Everything about your life is money. You don't care to question God. Lord, it is your will. Your bank is your God. It's your statement, your bank statement that is your God. If it's not increasing the value on your bank statement, you don't listen to it. Even if it's a message from God, no time for God, no regard from God. Oh, yes. Some of you, you don't want to listen to your pastor. You don't want to listen to any man, any woman that is a mouthpiece for God. Because why? You are saying that they are poor. They are, not, they are not rich. What testimony do they have to tell you anything? Was Jesus, when he walked in the land of the living, dressed in all the designer stuff and riding a golden chariot, was he? But he, he, he stripped himself of his glory to come here to die for you. Now you, you look at people that are your brothers and sisters as simple people. Oh, they are not very educated. Oh, they have not had opportunity for education. This is your life. You begin to judge people by what they do for a living and how much money they have accrued. And you'll only listen to advice of people who are well off. You don't care to listen if it's go good advice, godly advice. You just want to listen to somebody who has made it. Therefore, you reject the simple things of God. You reject the things that God is telling you. You don't want to know. Let me tell you something. You have a golden calf. So I'm here to say that is either you repent, my dear. Is either you come to God and repent and say, Lord, I am going back to where I started from. I don't want this golden calf anymore. I don't want to perish. And then all I have to answer for is this golden calf that I've been serving in idolatry. Lord, I repent. I turn away today, Lord God. Oh, you will continue with your golden calf, getting fatter and fatter every day, richer and richer, and your bank account going fatter and fatter every day. And then you will miss the mark. You will miss your salvation. You will lose your salvation. It's your choice. Life is about choices, but spiritual life as well. Our spiritual life is about choice. Choices that we make here when we are still alive. In this earthly suit called body. That's all it is. Some of you, God is telling you, don't do that again. Don't do it anymore. But because it's profitable to you. Because it's you, all you say, oh, at least it's helping me to pay my bills. Let me tell you something. You will die and leave bills behind for others to pay. You will die and leave that house that you are disobeying God to maintain. You will die and leave all those children that you are disobeying God because you are saying that, oh, I need to feed my kid. You will die and leave them. And still, 
sit before God in judgment. You choose. Some of you, oh, if Jesus was to come back, he would have gone back long ago. Look for how long the Bible has been, you know, telling us and nothing has happened. You have no excitement for the second coming of the Messiah. You, when, when, when we are preaching about the second coming of the Lord, when we are rejoicing because Jesus is coming back, we are when somebody's excited for rapture, oh, you reject, oh, mm -mm. because you know you are not ready. Deep down, your spirit man knows you are not ready. Look at your big golden calf that you have built, that you have been worshiping and you have been doing everything to sacrifice to that golden calf. And then your spirit begins to reject that message. Therefore, you don't have ears to care to listen that look, the time is coming. The clock of salvation is ticking. You don't want to know. Some of you, you take your wages to go and enjoy yourself. With ladies, your wife is at home waiting for your check to pay some bills, to do things, to help the children. And all you do, you take your hard-earned money. You go with girls, you take them out, you go to restaurants. And then when it all finishes, that's when you return home. And then your wife has to juggle that job that she has, plus the second one, plus the kids. And some of you, even your in-laws are suffering because they have to keep your children for you because you don't want to take up responsibility in the home. Some of you ladies, because your husband is not making that income, you have somebody that is paying you your bills. You bring that filthy money to your home and you buy food and you feed your husband with it. God is watching you. That is your golden, golden calf. Some of you, your lifestyle is your golden calf. Oh, yes. When be people begin to tell you that, look, we are going to church. We are going on a retreat. We are going for prayer. We are going on fasting. You begin to think, look at them. No money, no nothing. But they are going from prayer to prayer. From evening prayers, from evening. But look at them. Look at the condition of their life. Look, look at them. I'm here to say that one day you can lose all that you have and then God will promote those that you are laughing at them, that they are nobodies. That's how life is in God. The Bible says that he um, puts kings into place and takes another, another, another down. He can do all things. You are there bragging because you have, I have a big home to maintain. I don't have their life. I don't have their life. I've got bills to pay. I don't have their life. They live in condos and I live in a house. I don't have their time. I don't have their life. Let me tell you something. God can trade places, you know. God can entrust that little servant that is faithful to, 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 to that big place that you have and then put you in, in his condo and see if you're going to manage. Because what you don't see is that God still makes a way for them. What you don't see is that they are not compromising, but God is paying their rent. They are not compromising, but God is feeding them. They are not compromising, but God is taking care of them. But you cannot see the grace of God upon their lives. All you see is that they, they are not rich. They are not pompous. They are not this and that. That's all you can see. Things can change, saints, in a twinkle of an eye. The rich can become poor and the poor can become rich. That is how the mysteries of God are. But when I do, you too focus on be rich, you too focus on reputation, you too focus on what people think of you and to show people that you are somebody, you will miss salvation. You will miss the grace of God. You will miss the Holy Ghost and the wonder, wondrous works of God. You cannot compare the joy of a person, saints, that was owing something and then all of a sudden God makes a way for them because they know what is to trust in God. They are always experiencing miracles. There are people, saints, that their lives are difficult because God wants to perform miracles every day in their lives. That's why 
always God allows them to preach right, 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 right to the end. And then God makes a way for them to show them that, look, your life, it's going to be a life of signs and wonders. Your life is going to be a life of miracles. Your life is not going to be a life void of my spirit. Your life is not going to be a life void of my provision. You will see signs and wonders and miracles every day because I have chosen you. Don't worry about who is doing what. They are trusting in their own ability. They are trusting in their own strength to make it. They are trusting in their education. They are trusting in the connections that they have. But you, little you, is trusting God. That's why when you go to, co to court, God gives you the victory. Oh, they have solicitors. They have lawyers, people who have influence backing them up. But in the end, God gives you, little you victory. Oh, yes. And I wonder why are you always smiling and always happy and joyful. You are always singing and whistling because you have tasted that God is good. You have tasted that God is faithful. Nobody can come and tell, listen, some of you, when you go to church, no one no one needs to tell you, oh, let's lift our holy hands. You already enter the temple with lifting your holy hands. You already enter the temple giving God glory because every day of your life, you can see that God is good. Oh, yes. But some people don't have that. They go to church and the pastor gives them the front seat. That's where they sit. Oh yes, with their designer suits. But when the worship team begins to connect with God and usher everybody into the presence of God, this is how they do. They have golden calves. They don't know who God is. That I have never tasted that God is good. They don't know what is to be in need and see God moving mountains, moving people, moving everything to meet their need. They don't know. They're clueless. Come on now, saints. We don't need nobody to tell us to worship God. We know that he's worthy. We know that he's made a way for us. We know that we've been in a hospital. We were once sick and the doctor was telling us this and that. And God showed up last minute and healed and restored even our children. We know we don't need anybody to tell us to worship him. We don't need anybody to tell us today's time for you to pray. We don't need anybody to tell us, look, go and read the Bible. We don't need anybody to tell us to look today. You're going to fast because we know that that is what is required from us. We know that that is our calling. We know that that is our assignment. We know that we don't need to sit in the front seats to show that we love God. We don't need the designer suits to show that he is our God. We don't need any of their stuff. We don't need none of the gold of the golden calf. We don't need nothing that looks like the old golden calf. All we need is Jesus. All we need is his mercies that endureth forever. All we need is div his divine provision. They can keep their golden calf. They can keep their reputation. They can keep their connections. We want to be divinely connected. Oh, yes. Wake up, saints, before it's too late. Oh, yes. Wake up before it's too late. I'm here to say, saints, that we are running out. That door of grace is slowly closing. Few are entering and many are perishing. Oh, yes. Some of you that are saying, but sister, the Lila is too hard. I've been in this situation for so long, sister, the Lila, if you only knew. And I've been trying my best. I've been doing everything, but I'm still stuck in the same situation and I cannot break through. I'm here to say, come out in Jesus name. Come out, come out, come out. You are coming out today. Oh yes, today the Lord is going to reward you for your faithfulness. Today the Lord is going to visit you from heaven. Oh yes, to give a response to that stubborn problem that has been looking into your face and say no to your rising, no to your going forward, no to your advancement, no to your going forward while the wicked is prospering, while the wicked are feasting, while the wicked are busy worshiping the golden calf. Today the Lord is going to avenge you. The Lord is going to show up at your door and say, listen, this is my home. Home. This is my dwelling. These are my children. I'm here for them. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. God has never failed and he will, you will, he will not begin with you. Oh yes, you are not about to be the one. Come on now. 
You are not about to be the one. Oh yes. He is faithful. He is righteous. He doesn't see us the way we see ourselves. He sees us as his children. Oh yes, he has delight in us. But those of you who are entertaining golden calves, repent. The blessings are for the obedient children. Let me give you another piece of the Bible. Those, that generation that worshipped the golden calf did not see the promised land. Their children did, but they didn't. Why? Because God does not forget those who rebel against him. Though God does not forget those who begin to brag, who begin to say that the golden calf is the one who delivered them, is the one who is bless, blessing them. God will not be mocked. So don't worry about those wicked people that are attributing the blessings to their golden calf or whatever society they are in. You continue to be faithful to God and you will enter the promised land. Because the promised land is not for people who blaspheme the name of the Lord. The promised land is not for stiff, naked people like how the Bible is saying here in this book of Exodus that we just read today. Some of you here, God is saying, I am going to humble you until you put down that golden calf and destroy it. I will humble you. I will strip you off everything so that you will know that I am God. So that you will know who gave you in the first place. Come on now. God, it's not going to be mocked. So if you think that you can go on and continue to do what you want, this is a notice from God. This is a warning from God. He is about to come down on you. Oh, yes. Some of you, your golden calf, you have been keeping it hidden in your, somewhere in your home. You have been keeping that golden calf away from the public eye. But God is going to expose your golden calf. And then he will not be satisfied with that. He will always also expose your nakedness to the public. So might as well you just repent voluntarily. Repent voluntarily. Say, Lord, I've heard the ministration today, and I don't want to be one of them. I don't want to be one of them, Lord. I don't want to be publicly shamed. So I'm volunteering myself before your holy throne. And I'm, and, and, and I'm please, Lord, I don't want the golden calf anymore. I reject it. You're going to have to do that. Some people think, and this is a wrong, mis this is the wrong thing that is taking over the church of God. People think that prophets only come to say good things. Prophets only come to prophesy BMWs and car keys and home keys. No, saints. A prophet comes to warn the children of God that, look, destruction is coming. Judgments of God are about to be pronounced against his children. Remember, judgment begins with the church. You keep thinking that, oh, God is going to first destroy the ungodly. No, it's going to start with us first oh yes because we were the ones that he redeemed we were the ones he come for so who do you think is going to go to the world and judge them first no the bible says that judgment begins in the church so your pastor he will be the first one then his wife and then the deacons and then all the ashes and all those in authority in your church then is you so get ready get ready it's coming, saints. It's coming. It's coming. So let us repent. Let us repent before God deals with us in a way that there will be no time for us to repent. Some of you that are watching me today is either you lay down that idol today and you repent before the Lord because tomorrow is not promised to you. You are thinking that, oh, at the end of the day, I will go to bed and get up in the morning. Who told you that? Now you have information from God. Who is going to, you have the list now to tell you who and who is going to wake up tomorrow. So you are now in charge. Good luck. And I hope all is well. So saints, I know that some, some of you don't want to hear this. 
It's not something pleasant, but it has to be done. Somebody has to do it. Oh, yes. Somebody has to tell you. Somebody has to do it. Somebody has to tell you that the day of reckoning is coming. Are you ready? Let me just ask you another question, saints. If God was to return today, if the trumpet was to sound today, perhaps even in the midst of this ministration, will you go? Will you, will you be raptured? Or will you be the one, one of the, the many who will be staying behind? What do you think? What do you think? Some of you would stay behind because you are coveting your neighbor's car. Some of you would stay behind because you are biting your nails. Anxiety has taken over. You cannot believe God for your next meal. You cannot believe God to pay your bills. You cannot believe God for your sustenance. You are biting your nails, always doubting, always trusting your own means to carry you through. Some of you, you will stay behind because you have an extra marital affair. Some of you will stay behind because of your fornication. Some of you will stay behind because of your cheating your lying and your slander i don't know what it is but i'm asking you today will you be raptured would you would jesus would jesus have delight in you and say come on up we go into the clouds or would you be the ones rejected and left behind ask yourself if you cannot ask yourself that question positively Allow the Holy Spirit to show you what is the golden calf so that today you will repent. There is still, still time because you are still alive. You are still in the land of the living. You are still in the plain faculties of your brain. I've noticed that some people that call me to ask for prayer or guidance, I pray for them and I tell them what the Holy Spirit is saying and they reject. I don't think God would say that. I don't think God would want me to walk out of this deal. I don't think God would want me to do this. So why did you contact me then? If you know better. Do your own thing. Why are you telling me and bothering me to pray for you? And when God speaks, you don't want to hear you reject because that, that is not comfortable for you. You want God to be your butler. You want God to be serving you, but you don't want to submit to God. Because you're too used to go to those pastors that say to you, collect your money first and then tell you what you want to hear. Even if you were walking to hell, they don't care. That's why when somebody sends me a message, oh, I want you to pray for me. How much is it? How much do you charge? I delete you because you're not ready. You're not ready for no prayer. And you have not been paying attention to the ministration. You have not been paying attention when the gospel is being released here on this live stream. So go where they're lying to you. Go to where your pastor is not addressing your sin. Some of you, the way you look, your pastor knows that you are not living right. Your pastor knows that you are involved in something you shouldn't be involved. But guess what? He says, it's not my business. As long as she's faithful with her tithing, as long as she's faithful with her offering, I do not care. Let her leave. We don't judge in this church. No judgment. Okay. Carry on. Do you know that your pastor... The person who counsels you, if he's not honest with you, you know what will happen? Your blood will be upon his head. And that is a difficult reality for some of spiritual leaders to grasp. But it's the truth. Some of you, your own child, you know that your child is doing wicked things. You cannot correct them because they cannot, they cannot do any wrong to you until one day they come and slap you in the face and begin to abuse you and beat you and do all that. Then it's too late. It's too late. There is nothing you can do. It's spoiled. That's it. Only divine intervention from God can deliver that child. Some of you, your spouse, you know that he's not faithful to you. You know that he's spending... Or she's spending all her income in someone else. But you keep yourself in that relationship. And you don't tell him anything. And you don't tell her anything. Because you've gotten too accustomed with living with them. Because you've got assets together. You've got things together. So you are, let me tell you thing, something. You are partaker of the sin. Because you did not tell them. You did not confront them. You are partaker of the sin. 
And some of you, I need to tell you this. Run from those congregations. Run from those churches that the pastor never preaches about sin. That the pastor or the, your spiritual leader, it's not preaching about sin. It's not preaching about the second of second coming of Jesus. It's not telling you how to go to heaven. It's not telling you what are the requirements for you to be able to be uh, raptured. What are the requirements for you to enter into those pearly gates? Run as fast as you can because the Bible says my children come out from among them. Come out. Come out. Come out. Because <laughs> by you Going into that church and presenting your offering and, and, and your tidings. They have a golden calf and you are giving it to that golden calf because they are not living right. They are only focused on the expensive and lavish cars, their properties, they are acquiring and the events and then this and the, that. Some of your churches are, are places of commerce. They are not churches. They are gather, ga gatherings of thieves. And robbers and traders and merchants. They are not churches anymore. Run. It's not worth your salvation. It's not worth you compromising your relationship with God. Because you know what happened, saints? Aaron was a man that had seen what God had done. He was chosen by God. But guess what? He was corrupted by the people. Sin rubs, saints. Don't think you can be in the presence of sinners and mockers and that, that sin is not going to impact you. It's not going to shape the way you think, the way you even see God. It's a matter of time until you are in the mud with them. It's a matter of time until you are engulfed in flames. Just saying, saints, I don't know who God is talking to today. But God gave me this message. And it's not an easy message. It's a very difficult message. And I'm, I'm telling you this, saints. Some pastors do not preach these messages because people genuinely leave the church. They walk away. They don't want their members to go down, to decrease. Because they are not trusting in God to sustain their ministry. They are trusting the money that is coming from the, 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 the saints. They are not trusting that God will sustain that ministry. They're not trusting that God will provide the funds. No, they are trusting in the money and the influence of the, of the congregation because some of them, the congregation is large and is a gathering of business women, business men, and is a gathering of people who are financially capable of doing mighty things. And that is why they cannot preach mess messages like this. But guess what? Those congregations are going to hell. They are not going to hell. They are all going to hell. Some of you, you are beginning to, because you attend such congregations, you cannot give God praise for that little car that he has blessed you with. Because when you are parking your car in that church car park, all you see is Lamborghinis and phantoms and whatnot. So you begin to look at yourself like a nobody. Let me tell you something. They will be going to hell with their phantoms. They will be going to hell with their mansions. They will be going to hell with their influence and whatever money they have saved in your accounts. We keep, we keep thinking that this earthly life is the end. No, saints, we are going to die and go somewhere. Oh, yes, Jesus said, I have gone to prepare a place for you. Remember how it started today with the scripture I had given to you. Moses had gone to receive from God the laws, the impartation from God concerning the next level of, 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 of greatness that the Israelites were called upon. And the Israelites began to think that he was never going to return. Same thing with you. Because Jesus has gone. Jesus has resurrected. He has ascended. You are thinking, ah. This is all the stuff in the Bible, but the end of, let me worry about my how I might can make myself rich. Some of you, you call yourself a Christian, but you are like that rapper that says, get rich or die, die trying. That is your life. You are living like him. Get rich or die trying. That is your motto. Anything for paper, anything for paper, anything, anything, anything. 
anything. Examine yourselves. And when I say examine yourself, I need to examine myself as well. It's included in this message. The main objective of the gospel is to keep us closer to Jesus. It's for us to constantly examine ourselves so that we will not miss heaven, so that we will not miss entering through those pearly gates, completely washed, redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I'm going to give you a testimony of a dream I had before I started this ministry. I had a dream that I was walking and it looks like a futuristic town. Very, you know, everything was modern. It was not even this kind of buildings that we had now. The, 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 you know, the, the, tran the public transport was like floating. Like, you know, everything was so top. And it was a high tech city. That's it. And as I was walking in that city, I could see some of, the people I know feasting, restaurants, shopping, doing things. And I was just observing and I was just walking and observing as if I was a spirit, right? And in that dream, I heard the trumpet sound and I looked up angels, hosts of heaven, chariots of fire. And I saw the Lord Jesus, although I could not see his face, but I could see the brightness of God. And all I heard, he says, my daughter, it's time to ascend. And I kept calling upon him and I kept ascending, 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 ascending until we were just about to reach the throne of God. We were just about to reach the, the pearly gates. And I could see the gates were open and it's a marvelous place, saints. And guess what happened? And guess what happened at that minute? I woke up and I was crying. I was crying, I was crying, I was crying, I was crying because I did not, I was like, why did I have to wake up? I wish I had gone in. You are too, the devil is keeping you busy with things that are irrelevant. He's keeping you busy with brands. He's keeping you busy with reputation. He's keeping you busy with stupidness. Things that are irrelevant, things that don't serve any poor purpose, things that are stupid, that don't serve any purpose. It's keeping you busy. For what? For what? I'm here to say, saints, don't allow the enemy to distract you from your purpose. You've been in the land of the living. What is your purpose? Your purpose is to go to heaven. That is why the son of God was made manifested. It was not for you to acquire a vast collection of sports car. It was not for you to be amassing, amassing properties, mansions and everything and money. For what? Die with all that money and still go to hell. That is why the devil is keeping you busy. When God is telling you, leave this behind, don't worry about it, just leave it. Go about your business. You begin to think of the money you have lost. You begin to think of the money that you're not going to earn. And you continue in that dark path. Listen, this is a wake up call for you today. You got to make up your mind. If God is God, serve him. But if you want to continue to serve the golden calf, continue to serve the golden calf. But at least you know what is the message. You know what God is saying. I have delivered the message. Let us all go into prayer, saints. Let us repent from our sins. Let us turn to God, who is the source of all our being, who is the source of our sustainers, who is the one who keeps our hearts beating. Our hearts are not beating. Our vital organs are not in perfect shape because we eat well, because we drink a lot of water. Yes, those things are good because we are the temple of God. But remember who keeps your heart beating. Remember who sustains you. Remember who every day gives you the breath of life and surrender yourself to him. Father Lord, I thank you for today, Lord God. I thank you for the reality check that is so needed, Lord. At such a time as this, Father Lord, where men are lovers of themselves, men are worshippers of themselves and worshippers of luxury and success and advancement and careers and all these different things, Lord God, that we will all die one day and leave behind. Father, we are guilty of it. Many times we think that we are 
losing because our path is a path of righteousness because we have to do certain things that the world doesn't need to do because we are keeping a standard that sometimes lord we feel lonely we have no friends sometimes we feel abandoned we feel like life is not really pleasant but lord we are thankful anyway for the gift of life we are thankful father lord for giving us life for giving us the gift of life, Lord God. We are thankful, Father Lord, above all, for the gift of salvation, for the hope that we have in Christ that one day we will rise in him, that even if rapture does not happen while we are still in the land of the living, we know this, Lord, that we're going to stand before you to be judged for everything that we have said, that we have done, everything that we have thought. So, Lord, before it's too late, we humbly come before your holy throne of mercy, Lord God, to ask you for forgiveness of our sins. To ask you that you will forgive us from all our iniquities. To ask you that you will transform our hearts, our souls, and our spirits. That we will not covet what belongs to the world. That we will not be comfortable worshiping golden calves. That, Father Lord, we will surrender and destroy every idol that we have erected and we are keeping it with us. So, Father Lord, manifest your power today. As we repent, fill us with your Holy Spirit. As we repent, fill us with your presence as we repent fill us with your holy ghost as we repent lord god help us to continue to sustain ourselves in the land of the living help us to continue father lord to keep the fire burning for you help us to continue to sustain a life of righteousness through the power of the holy ghost father lord all demons in evil altars that has been assigned against our lives lord god making us stumble in adultery in sin and all these different things we command these demons to kill themselves with their own own weapons in the mighty name of Jesus. Aggressive evil altars and priests sponsoring sin in our lives and bloodline. Scatter with all your altars and die in the mighty name of Jesus. Crossroad altars refusing to cooperate refuse to cooperate with our enemies in jesus mighty name as from today we destroy evil invitations in the evil altars of sin against our lives in jesus mighty name in jesus mighty name we block the entrance and exit gates of evil altars against our destinies in the mighty name of jesus evil refreshments in the evil altar seize in the mighty name of jesus evil refreshments in evil altars take your house away from our our existence in the mighty name of Jesus. Any evil tree harboring demons against us dry up from your root in the mighty name of Jesus. Our destinies come out from the rock or altars of darkness in the mighty name of Jesus. Evil deposits in our lives that were generated because of sin and disobedience to you Lord Jesus and from evil altars come out and enter no more in Jesus mighty name. Any satanic masquerade or snake attacking our lives because of past sin from the evil altars die and die again in the mighty name of jesus any satanic law enforcing agents of darkness in our dreams go and arrest your sender in the mighty name of jesus our landlords will not swallow our destinies in the mighty name of jesus any evil covenant existing in a place where we are living now and where we have lived previously break and release us by fire in the mighty name of jesus any power following us about from places we have been before go back to your sender in the mighty name of jesus any power attacking our lives because of our evil relationships in the past and our sinful life in the past and in present go back to your sender in jesus mighty name any power troubling us from any evil foundation that was built with sin loose our lives in jesus mighty name any evil altar demon that has vowed to destroy our prayer lives die with your priests in jesus mighty name you gorillas of anointing in the land we are not your candidates forsake us by fire in jesus mighty name we shall not lose lose our jobs because we are living in this houses that we live because we are living in the nation that we are living in the economical system that we are living in jesus mighty 
name. In Jesus' mighty name. Every compulsory problem in our lives. Die without mercy in Jesus' mighty name. Oh Lord, pull us out from stubborn altars that have vowed to render us useless in the mighty name of Jesus. Our miracles, what are you waiting for? Manifest now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our miracles, what are you waiting for? Manifest now. Manifest now. Manifest now in the mighty name of Jesus. Our brains think again and think all right for we are delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Our destiny help us. You cannot forget us. Help us by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Fire of death burning us from the evil altar. Disappear by force in the mighty name of Jesus. Every disappointing is not a blessing. We refuse to disappoint God in Jesus mighty name. Evil murderers turn your weapons against yourselves immediately in Jesus mighty name. Any generational curse in our lives with stubborn weapons die in Jesus mighty name. Our lives jump out from the cauldron of witchcraft forever and ever in Jesus mighty name. Any congregation of demons against us scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. Witches gathered on our right hand. Wizards gathered on our left hand. Begin to fight against yourselves in Jesus mighty name. Anything we owe to evil powers. Blood of Jesus pay for us now in Jesus mighty name. Hellfire collect your problems in our lives and go forever and ever far away from us in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name effect of strange hands that has touched us before disappear in the mighty name of Jesus full deliverance begin to take place in our lives today without hindrance in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus local and international demons from evil altars gathering against us scatter by fire in Jesus mighty name say Titanic embassies refuse to issue visas to demons into our lives today in Jesus mighty name fasting praying incantations and bewitchment will fall and will fail our enemies forever in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name we refuse to surrender to Satan and all his stubborn associates they will surrender to us in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name with Holy Ghost fire we withdraw our file of life from every evil altar in Jesus mighty name we destroy all evil altars of compulsory problems memory failure failure at the point of success with the Holy Ghost fire in Jesus mighty name we destroy all generational evil altars in our lives with the Holy Ghost fire in Jesus mighty name. We destroy all village altars operating against our lives with the Holy Ghost fire in Jesus mighty name. We destroy all evil altars or place of birth with the Holy Ghost fire in Jesus mighty name. We destroy all evil altars of sickness with the Holy Ghost fire in Jesus mighty name. We destroy all evil altars of poverty with the Holy Ghost fire in Jesus mighty name. We destroy Destroy all kinds of evil altars operating against us with the Holy Ghost fire in Jesus mighty name. With the Holy Ghost fire, we withdraw our lives from every evil altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father Lord, I'm asking you today that you will manifest your power today, Father Lord, as we connect our faith, Father Lord, with one another and we stand in agreement. I pray for deliverance to take place. I pray for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our midst. Oh, Father Lord, allow Allow us to be your oracles in the land of the living. Allow us, Father Lord, to be recipients of your Holy Ghost. Oh, speak to us, Lord God. Not what we want to hear, Lord God, but what you want us to listen to so that we can repent, so that we can change, so that we will not miss the mark, Lord God, so that we will not be left behind, Almighty God. Manifest your power today, Lord God. Manifest your anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy. We thank you, Father Lord, for deliverance that has been made available to us today. We thank you, Father Lord, for reconciling us back with you, Lord God, through the blood of your son, Jesus. Father Lord, I thank you. Father Lord, I thank you and I worship you and I honor you, Lord God. And I give you glory. I give you honor and adoration, Lord God. And I give you, Father Lord, we all the praise. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Father. And we thank you, Father Lord, for even considering us as your children. For even having mercy, Lord God, when we don't deserve it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. There is a person here 
you and your parents once went to see a one of these herbalists or what we call them witches and they did some sort of rituals and they use snails to do it those big snails they use it some of them were cooked you had to eat it some of them there were some baths and you did this god is saying that repent on behalf of your parents you will know christ now and those are demonic rituals and if you don't repent you will continue to be stagnant in life you will continue to struggle because every time a man consults a witch or a wizard or a warlock disaster curses and all manner of evil befalls that person you said you repent write capital me somebody has identified the rules of this dream is that you write capital me but i get you you have repented so may the good lord grant you forgiveness in jesus name and as you repent i speak over your life that the lord god will restore every area of your life that is broken that is cursed and you will break the curse and allow you to fulfill your purpose in the land of the living as you repent receive deliverance from god receive deliverance from god in jesus mighty name in jesus mighty name in jesus mighty name let me repeat the rules of the live stream you only type capital me if you were identified in the prophecy the prophecy was clearly for the first person have you been involved in any ritual as a child with snails if that is not you don't identify you don't type me because the me you type if you are the person identified by god okay let that rule begin to make sense all right father lord i'm asking you today lord god you that you reveal all hidden things lord god you that reveal all things so that people can repent so that people can come in contact with you lord god and be made whole lord god and understand your word lord god i pray for deliverance i pray for healing lord god i pray for restoration lord god in jesus mighty name there is a person here every time you are about to experience big breakthrough in life or you are about to do something good you have a dream and after that dream everything is destroyed oh yes you even know that it's not even worth trying because it's gone bad and the dream is that you see a gorilla massive one chasing you in the dream as long as you see yourself in that dream with the gorilla chasing you you know that whatever you had going on it dies it, it is not successful but god wants to arrest that demonic power that has been assigned to destroy your life to frustrate you in Christ so that you will not fulfill purpose so that you not become what God has predestined for you but you need to write capital me write capital me you that every time you are about to experience breakthrough receive the victory in the mighty name of Jesus father lord i'm asking you today arrest that demon of gorilla lord god that has been assigned father lord to cause torment and pain and affliction to your children almighty god bind that gorilla with the everlasting chains of the holy ghost fire cast it onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever so that it will be forever rendered powerless and that your children will no longer have that dream again lord god release them lord set them free father lord in jesus mighty name and as they repent lord god restore them let signs and wonders and miracles take place let them be able father lord to be delivered Father Lord, let them be able to experience your peace that surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. There is a lady here on this live stream. Since you were involved with a so-called prophet. Oh yes, that prophet told you that, oh, in order for you to be set free and everything, you have to be intimate with me. And you did this. But what you have noticed is that since then your life is worse than it was before. You are leaving from from a, a, a problem to another problem. And now you are experiencing no help from anybody. Everywhere you go, no favor, no, no ease, nothing. And you are struggling in every area of your life because you decided to listen to these false prophets. And what you don't know is that he took your stars 
These are demonic prophets. They are not prophets from God. If this is you, write capital me here on the live stream. Don't be ashamed. Don't you want to be delivered? Don't you want God to deliver you? Don't you want God to set you free? Write capital me on this live stream. You the sister that you went to this false prophet. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father. I pray that you will be merciful unto these sisters that went to these false prophets, Lord God. Begin to bind, Father Lord, whatever demonic power was used to keep them bound, to keep them in poverty, to keep them in limitation, to keep them in stagnation, to keep them in poverty. Oh, Lord God, cast these demons onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever. Never to return against your daughters. Never to return against the daughters of Zion. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, restore them unto their greatness. Father Lord, I command their stars in whatever altar they are, Lord God, to return to them right now. In Jesus' mighty name, receive back your stars in Jesus' mighty name. Receive back your stars in Jesus' mighty name. Begin to rise in Jesus' mighty name. As you receive salvation today and you repent, Receive advancement in signs and wonders in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. There is a, 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 a person on this live stream you used to live with your grandmother. And your grandmother demanded every time you had your period for your pads. And you never understood why she was doing this. And every time you had your period, she used to say, don't just dispose of the pads. Put them in these places like a, a bag and give them to me. Let me be in charge. And you were a child. You didn't know better. So you complied. You thought that perhaps this is how life is. No, 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 no. That was a demonic ritual that was done by your blood so that your grandmother will advance, be rich, go and do prosper while you go down, while you cannot settle, get married, while you cannot have somebody in your life, while you are going down. All I need you to do, write capital me so that God will set you free, so that God will deliver you today, so that that curse will be broken today. But you have to identify, write capital me and I will pray for you and your life will never be the same again because the God of heaven... The Jehovah God that sets the captives free is here to set you free. So all you need to do is to write capital me. Write capital me. Don't be ashamed. Others have the identified of things even worse. And they've identified because they are desperate for a breakthrough. They are desperate for the touch of the Lord. They are desperate for the curse to be broken. So you just write capital me very quickly. Say, it's me, Sister Dalila. I had this happen to me as a child. Write capital me very quickly, please. You, the young lady that your grandmother, you, you received the victory in Jesus' name. Father Lord, I'm asking you today that the blood covenant that was done by with your period blood as a child will be broken in Jesus' mighty name. Break that curse over this sister, Lord God. Destroy that curse and the altar that was erected to curse this beloved sister, to take away her stars, her potential and blessings and replace them for evil. Release this sister Jehovah in Jesus' mighty name. Release her, Father. Release her release and break the curse Lord God so they can begin to manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that their gifts can begin to make a room for them Lord God so that they can begin to live according to what you have called them Lord God release them Lord Jesus break the curse Lord Jesus and release them and restore them Lord God in Jesus mighty name 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 there is a lady here your friend has told you that there is a business that you can go to another country and get clothes and then return to your own country and begin to sell them. And she's telling you how this is profitable, blah, blah, blah. And all you need is just to get a passport and a visa and then you will go to this place to do this business. Don't go. You will regret going with your friend. Your friend is not operating led by the spirit of God. You are going to step into places that your life will never be the same again. All I need you to do is to write capital me and receive deliverance from God and begin to thank God for delivering you. Because if you go on that journey, it's a journey of no return. Your life will never be the same again. Disaster will befall you. You, the lady that your friend has made a business proposal of going to another country, a neighboring country. 
to get clothes so that you can return to your country to sell it. Write capital me and don't go to this place because if you go, disaster will follow you. Oh yes, misfortune. God is revealing so that you will not go with your friend. Tell your friend, I'll think of something else. Don't worry about me. And trust God that he will make a way for, for you. But do not, do not go to this place. But I want you to identify yourself so that I can pray for you. Identify yourself by writing capital me. Just two letters. Say, it's me, Sister Dalila. I'm the one who my friend invited me for this clothing business to go to a neighboring country and go to get clothes and resell them in our country. Do not go because if you go, misfortune will follow you. You will never be the same again. Calamity will befall you, so don't go. Write capital me and receive deliverance from God because this message is deliverance. Oh yes, God is delivering you because he loves you and he cares for you. He is telling you that this is not a good venture. This is not something that you should, a journey that you should embark. He has given you the word, so you have to be obedient. Quickly write capital me so that I can pray for you. Remember, there are many people here waiting for the touch of God. They are waiting for God to speak to them. Don't delay God and don't delay the saints that are here and not me that I'm here as well in obedience to God concerning this matter. Do it very quickly because some of you, you then go to my inbox. I will not connect with you there. God is here delivering you. This is the opportunity for you to be delivered. Write capital me. You, the person that your best friend has invited you for a clothing business to go to a neighboring country, buy some clothes, return and resell them. Write capital me and do not embark on that, on that journey. Don't go with that person. Repent. Write capital me. Father Lord, I'm asking you today that this lady will identify to receive prayer, Lord God, and that she will not obey, Father Lord, and go to this place with her best friend, and then calamity, Father Lord, will befall her, Father. I pray that, Lord, you will manifest your power, and they will identify themselves to put the devil to shame, Lord God. Father Lord, I pray that you will manifest your power, manifest your anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy, manifest your peace that surpasses all understanding. Oh, Lord God, open doors where there are no doors, Father Lord. Open ways where there are no ways, Father Lord. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. There is somebody here, your maternal grandmother has a snake. Yeah? She for years she's she's had this snake and you never understood why. You need prayer. Just write capital me. You need deliverance from serpentine powers. Just write capital me. I don't need you to write anything else because I won't be able to identify you if you don't write you. Listen, this this demonic snake is 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 a ritual, is a religion, right? There is a demon, there is an entity that is in that snake. You need prayer. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, those who have identified, Lord God, release them, Father, Lord, from the control and the dominion of a serpentine power, Lord God. Bind this serpentine spirit, Father. Cast it onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever. Never to return, Father, Lord, against your children, Lord God. Never to continue to manipulate their destinies, their finances, Father, Lord, even the way they live their lives, Lord God. Father, Lord, I pray that you will deliver them today. I pray that you will deliver them, Father, with your mighty hand, with your power and your anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy. And let every curse that is associated to that snake begin to break in the mighty name of Jesus. Break, 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 break in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, you, the lady that your best friend has invited you for a business that is to go to another country, buy clothes to resell them in your own country. Don't go. But I need you to identify yourself. You are on this live stream and you are not identifying. Let me tell you something. When you hear the word of the Lord, do not harden your heart. Respond to God. Don't let God waste his time. Write capital me. Write capital me and be ye set free in Jesus' name. Very quickly. Write capital me. Don't come after in the inbox to contact me after. I will not entertain you because God is doing what he's doing here. All I need you to do is write capital me and cooperate with God. Do not go to that place. Listen. Don't be disobedient. Money should never take over. Oh, a prospect of something take over the will of God for you. And above all, a warning from God. All right. Just write capital me in the mighty name of Jesus and be delivered. All right? And don't embark on that journey. 
Amen. Amen, Jesus. Father, Lord, I pray today, Lord God, for deliverance to take pay place on this live stream. That those, Father, Lord, who are still slaves of the devil, slaves of the enemy, those who are slaves to altars that were erected by forefathers that were worshipping wicked cults, Lord God, that today as they obey, Lord God, they will be set free, Father, Lord, from the power of the devil, from the influence of the enemy, Lord God, from every shackle of the enemy, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name name in jesus mighty name in jesus mighty name father lord deliver your children father lord arise and fight for them lord god father lord arise and fight for them there is a person on this live stream there is a curse of incest in your family oh yes and that curse is following you unless you begin to confess to god and repent on behalf of your forefathers you will always struggle in life. You will never going to be able to feel the presence of God. You will, you will always be far away from God and his blessings. But God is asking you today, repent. Yes, it was not you, but it's in the family. So repent on their behalf. Say, Lord, I repent on their behalf. I want nothing to do with these curses. I want you to set me free, Father Lord, from a, whatever generational curse, Father Lord. It's in my family, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. Receive deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. As you stand in the gap for your family members to repent, to ask God to be merciful. May you advance in, in, in anointing. May the Holy Spirit take control over your life. May the Holy Spirit begin to lead you and guide you. May your gifts begin to make room for you. And may you be restored with the blessings of Abraham and Deuteronomy 28. In mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, deliver Father, restore Lord God, restore them Father Lord unto their greatness, restore them Father Lord unto their purpose, restore them Father Lord unto their anointing that they need to be, they need Father Lord in order to be able to operate in their gifts Lord God, in Jesus mighty name, in Jesus mighty name, set them free Jehovah, set them free O oh Lord, set them free jehovah set them free O oh lord in jesus mighty name there is a person here that your mother when you were a child used to take you by the rivers and you had to dress all in white and you had a proper outfit that you needed to dress in order to go by the rivers but now you have understood that you are struggling you are getting of age. No one is interested in you. No money will. No one will marry you. And you are struggling with a spiritual husband. You are that are here. Identify yourself by writing capital me. Write capital me and be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I'm asking you as this sister repents, Father Lord, from this sin of worshiping mermaids and the mermaid kingdom, Lord God, that you will set her free, Father Lord, from the control and the dominion of these demonic pacts, Father Lord, done with the marine kingdom, Lord God. I pray that, Father Lord, as you forgive them, that you begin, Father Lord, to bind principalities and rulers of darkness that have legal rights over their lives because of the pacts that were done. Father Lord, by them severing these pacts, Father Lord, I'm asking you bind these demons with the everlasting chains of the Holy Ghost fire. Cast them all onto the bottomless feet of the abyss forever and ever, never to continue to control, manipulate, and destroy the destinies of your children. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, you the lady that you had a business proposal from your best friend to go to another country, to buy clothes and return to your home country to resell these things. Don't go on those demonics, demonic journey. Calamity will follow you there. Identify yourself. Write capital me and don't go on that journey with your best friend. It's not worth your life. It's not worth anything that you have that you think you will profit from this journey just trust god he is faithful you just write capital me that's all and i will pray for you and i will not call your name again but you need to seriously consider writing capital me on this stream because some of you like to contact me later don't do this this is the hour of salvation that god is making available for his children here on this platform you are fortunate that god has even considered your case 
Father, Lord, I'm asking you today, Lord God, manifest your power, Lord God. Manifest your anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy. Manifest your Holy Spirit today, Lord God. Father, Lord, you that reveals all things, Almighty God, let your power begin to manifest. Let your Holy Ghost begin to manifest, Lord God. Father, Lord, I pray that today, Lord God, receive the victory, sister, in the mighty name of Jesus. And don't go on that journey. As you obey God, don't go on that journey. Trust that God will provide for you. Trust that God is going to make a way for you. We live in a wicked time and people will sacrifice others, do things that so they can advance as even if it's to destroy others, they don't care. That is the kind of society, that is the kind of world that we live. The person has identified saints. Glory be to God. She has fully identified. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for protecting this beloved sister, Lord God. Thank you for protecting her. Thank you for delivering her, Father Lord, from the hands of the wicked one, Lord God. From the hands of the wicked one, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is a person here. You are owing your pastor some money that you borrowed from the church to do something. And every time God blesses you and that money is enough to go and pay the pastor, you make plans with that money. You are going to have a curse in your life, you know. You need to repent. Even now that I'm still talking to you, you still have that money that you can give that pastor. You borrowed the money in the pastor because he is a man of God. He gave you the money. You cannot take the money from the table of the saints that they have contributed to that church and think that you can make God wait in his money. You are fooling yourself. You need to pay back the money you owe to that pastor. Write capital me. And after this ministry has ended, go and pay the man of God. He's pay, pay him back for his money. And if I were you, I would add a little on top. And ask God to forgive you. Some people think that the money that is in church is the, is, belongs to the pastor. No saints. It belongs to God. God is the one that makes the funds available so that the ministry can continue to go forward. All right? And are donations from saints that have sacrificed so that they can continue to have a place of worship. They can continue to sustain that ministry. You cannot do that. Go and pay the pastor his money before a curse from God is pronounced. Oh yes, it's been over three months. Pay the pastor his money. Give him his money back. We are not here to judge you, saint. It is just a warning from God. Oh yes, the pastor gave you that money out of his goodwill to help you as one of his sheep. You must obey and go and pay the pastor back his money. Be obedient, saint, and write capital me. Come on now, write capital me. Write capital me and be obedient to God. Be obedient and go and pay the pastor his money. Don't be ashamed because I am telling you that you should go and pay the money. It's not me. It's the Holy Spirit that is revealing that this is the problem that you have. And you must make amends and you must obey and go and pay the pastor back his money. He needs that money to continue the ministry. He needs that money to do whatever he needs to do in the ministry. Obey and go and pay the pastor his money. And don't make me wait here. I've got a lot of things to do. I still have to continue to pray. Just identify yourself. I don't know why you do these things. You, you delay, delay, and it's just after I've repeated myself and I have no more voice that you identify. You are not doing this to me, you know. You are doing it to God. If God has tagged you, has revealed you, identify, write capital me. Repent, go and pay the pastor his money. No one is here to judge you. No one is here to tell you what to do or what not. At the end, it is your head that is going to receive a curse. It's not mine. I'm here just being obedient to God. Obey God and go and do what you have been told to do. In Jesus' mighty name, go and obey God. Pay. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you for identifying, beloved. Father, Lord, as this beloved saint has identified, Lord God, that she did this. Father, Lord, I pray that she will go and pay the money. Thank you that she has identified, Lord God, on time, Lord God, to escape from a curse, Lord God, and do what is right, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
You are wonderful and you are perfect and you are wonderful. You are wonderful, Lord. Last word, there is a person here that you work in a factory, in the production line. And God is saying that that is not your place. There are vacancies at the office and you do have the right qualifications. Go and apply for the job. It is time for you to go and apply for the job. And there is a possibility that you can do this internally, not as an exterior person. Go and apply. Don't be afraid of your supervisor or what. You have the qualification. So what is the problem? The vacancy is available and you are a perfect candidate. You do have the requ what is required. So go and apply for that job. Uh, uh, write capital me so that I can pray for you and that you will be successful in applying for that job internally. So that you will receive that job. So that you will be selected in Jesus' mighty name. Receive your job, beloved sister Maria. Go and apply. The Lord God has gone ahead of you as a column of cloud by day, ordering your steps. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive that vacancy. Receive that job in Jesus' mighty name. You are going to be promoted and you are going further. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Saints, we have come once again almost to the end of this live stream. But before you go, let me pray for all of you saints. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I once again consecrate everyone that is present on this live stream today. Father Lord, I commit their lives into your hands. I'm asking you, Father Lord, once again for total forgiveness of all of our sins and transgressions and iniquities. If there is any sin in us, anything that we have done, Lord, or not confessed, that is hindering, Father Lord, us from being in your presence and receive impartation from you. Forgive us, Lord God. Remember the blood of Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. And be merciful, Father. Father, Lord, once again, I am asking you that you will continue to renew your precious armor around each one of your children present on this live stream today. Continue, Lord Jesus, to wash, cleanse, sanctify, and purify your servants that are here with your precious blood. Baptize each one of them with your Holy Ghost fire. Continue to fill them with your presence, with the power of your anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy, your peace that surpasses all understanding, and your love, Lord God, that covers a whole multitude of sins. And as they go into the world about their business, Lord God, I pray, release from your heavens armies of angels to encamp around them, to protect them and deliver them from all evil. I speak over their lives, Lord God that poverty, infirmity, and death shall not know their address. Lord God, let testimonies be always, Father Lord, in their tents. Father Lord, I pray that their gifts will continue to make room for them. I pray to open doors, Father Lord. I pray, Father Lord, divine connections. That Father Lord, I pray that their destiny help us will locate them and bless them according to your will and purpose for their lives. Father Lord, I pray. Visit Sister Jolene Stewart, Jerry Stewart, and Sister... Say it today, Lord God, with divine provision, Lord God, open doors, blessings, Lord God, showers of blessings, peace that surpasses all understanding, peace in their home, Lord God, and divine understanding, Father Lord, of your purposes for them. Visit Sister Sherelle Edwards, Sister Gail Ned, and La Pasha Mensa, Father Lord, with the blessings of Abraham and Deuteronomy 28. Father Lord, I pray for deliverance to take place in their lives. Open doors, Lord God, that you will not allow the devil to have dominion over their lives in Jesus precious name father Lord empower the Christian women leadership with the blessings of Abraham and Deuteronomy 28 give them authority and dominion father Lord in whatever they are doing visit sister Fortina Waltoa and Georgina Simmons with the blessings of Abraham and Deuteronomy 28 continue to open doors Lord God continue to provide always a way of escape Lord God supply the needs almighty God in Jesus mighty name touch sister Beth Lord God Sister Marjorie Evans and Sister Lori Nobles Gray. Father Lord, increase them in their knowledge of you. Oh, Father Lord, increase their anointing, Lord God. Deliver them from every schemes, Father Lord, of the enemy and every trap of the evil one. 
Let the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28 locate them, Lord God. Father, Lord, touch in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, touch again Sister Shadria Walker, Ravina Collins, and Brother Tyron Harris, Lord God. Let the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28 be upon them. Open the floodgates of heaven, Lord God, and bless the, your servants, Lord God, beyond measure. Visit Sister Rikita Walla, Rose and Biba, and Sister Tracy Middleton, Lord God. Provide a way of escape for them, Lord God. Let the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28 locate them in Jesus mighty name visit sister Tarmisha Hayes for Tina Waltoa, sister Choma Bedford and her children Shade Devante and her husband Titus Father Lord I speak open doors blessings Father Lord of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28, Father Lord I speak advancement, upliftment Lord God I speak promotion in Jesus mighty name, visit sister Lorian Baker, Natasha Findlay Shemaya Gates with unmerited favor Lord God, let everything that they touch prosper. Let every Father Lord application form be successful, O God. Let everything that they have, Father Lord, sow into your kingdom begin, Father Lord, to, to produce multiplication and good fruit, Father Lord, for them. In Jesus' mighty name, visit Brother Antonio Silva, Eric Campus, and Sister Simone Morgan, Lord God, with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Begin to open doors that no man can shut, Lord God. I pray open, open heavens, Father Lord, and showers of blessings, Lord God, and that you will support Surprise them, surprise them, Lord God, with signs and wonders in Jesus' mighty name. Visit Sister Rashonda Blake, Antoinette Lewis, and Brother Andrew, uh, Andrew Apostle, Lord God, with open doors, Lord God. I pray that you will uplift them above and beyond, Father Lord, all limitations of life. Father Lord, I pray that you will put all their enemies to shame in Jesus' mighty name. Visit Brother Eric Skeet, Lord God, and Antoinette Fleming, Michelle Wallace, and Daniel Elang, with Father Lord showers of blessings. Open doors, Lord God, advancement, promotion, Lord God, that their gifts will begin to make room for them. In Jesus' mighty name, visit Sister Michelle Johnson, Roxy Ann Bell, and Sister Natasha Fogo with divine provision, Lord God. Open doors, Lord God promotion, Lord God. Father, Lord, financial freedom, Lord God. Uh, 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 an open door, Lord God, that no man can shut in Jesus' mighty name. Visit also Kim Lehman, Father, Lord, our products and Sister Mary with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. I pray that whatever, Father, Lord, they do with the works of their hands will prosper. I speak advancement and healing and restoration, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. Visit Genoa Behair Care, Lord God. Sister Angela let Newman, Elisa Jarvin, and Coraline Joy. Father Lord, with a response from heaven. Father Lord, let everything that they touch turn into gold, Lord God. Let everything that they touch turn into gold. Visit Sister Cassandra Boyce, oh Lord God, with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Open the doors of heaven unto her as she sows her seed, Lord God, that you will not pass her by, that there will be open doors. There will be no limitation, no stagnation, no reproach. In Jesus, Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, visit Mama Harley, Amanda Hewson, Shay, Sheila Ray, and Brother Augustine Asiedo, Lord God, with the blessings of Abraham and Deuteronomy 28. Let the doors of heaven be open unto thy children. Father Lord, I pray that there will be no more reproach, no more delay, no more limitation in Jesus' mighty name. A curse poverty of candy. Cartwright in Jesus' mighty name. I curse poverty over Sister Kim in Jesus' mighty name. Yatawa, receive deliverance from God, upliftment, and the blessings of a Deuteronomy 28. Uh, blessing Sister Portia Slicks, Lord God, Lenise Moore, Aisha, Father Lord, and, and Julie Jeffries with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. I speak open doors for Sister Priscilla. I speak divine advancement for Sister Michelle. I speak, Father Lord, life into Leo's bones, Lord God. I speak advancement for Creamy Island. I speak, Father the Lord, a new beginning for Sister Brenda, aka West Harmland Plants, that doors will never close on in her face. I speak for Isabel Dush Santos that there will be victory in her life, there will be advancement, there will be prosperity for Yatawa, for Edita Zabawa, divine visitation for graceful Azalea, for Brother Ranito, Father Lord, open doors, Lord God, divine connections, Lord God, no more limitation, no more stagnation, no more delay. 
in Jesus mighty name there will be open doors for sister Aisha Lord God there will be a divine visitation for brother Jaha Lord God that there will be father Lord a response from heaven today after this ministration K Calix shall see the glory of the Lord and no more lip- limitations as he agrees with God you will be lifted over and beyond all limitations of life in Jesus mighty name visit sister Rachel with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28 open doors Lord God where there is no doors for sister Adriana Lord God Baba seven in blue oceans and sister Anna Cruz let your blessings fall upon their head and locate them. Let Brother K. Callis experience, Father Lord, your abundance. And Sister Cookie, Lord God, experience your abundance. As well as Sister Lenise and Ellie and these triple seven. Oh, Lord God, I pray advancement for Sister Ali and Frankie, Lord God, that they will advance. They will go forward for Mrs. Reed. They will not be left behind. They will not be cheated of their inheritance. They shall forego, for, go forward, Father Lord. Bless Sister Simone Holmes, Lord God locate her father lord where she is and sister roxy let prosperity be always her portion lord god and that her enemies will be put to shame as well as see ingrid that they shall see your glory and sister white lord god and nadi and see ingrid lord god that they will see your glory in every aspect of your of their lives in every area for of their lives in jesus mighty name shalom saints i hope you have a wonderful day and god willing i shall see you tomorrow saints shalom